Hi. As you probably well know, there are different roles that need to be filled whenever you're out PvPing in Sea of Thieves. Some of these roles are pretty self-explanatory, like how you need someone to be on the wheel to drive the boat, or you need someone to bail the water out of the boat, and someone to shoot cannons. But there's a fourth role that not too many people actually understand what's in the job description. A lot of people just assume that the flex role is just another word for main border. And while this is a part of the responsibilities that you have with the flex, there's more to it than just being the main border. This video will help explain what your responsibilities are when you're playing as the flex on your boat, and some of the more unknown aspects of the role that you might have forgotten about or just had no idea existed. So without further ado, here's part 3 of my 4 part series on the different roles of a ship. This one being the flex. Now just to set the record straight, you may have heard people call this role many different things. Some people call it the deckhand, the first mate, some people even call it support. And you can call it whatever you want, but for the sake of the video, I'm just going to call it the flex. Now obviously, like I hinted to before, one of your responsibilities when you take on the role of the flex is to be the main boarder. When Helm calls for someone to go board the enemy ship, that's your job. And I'll explain more in depth on how to be a good boarder in a later video that will encompass every thought I have when it comes to boarding, but let's move on for now. So there are two main duties that you as flex will need to be doing commonly, and that's hitting lowers and helping your bilge bucket when he needs help downstairs. We'll start with lowers. I already put a lot of my thoughts on how to shoot the cannon and hit your shots in my main cannon video, which is rule number two. Everything I said in that video still applies to flex. The only difference is that you as flex are in charge of hitting lower decks onto the opposing galleon instead of hitting top decks as if you were a main cannon. Lower decks win games, and while top deck pressure can be useful in certain situations, you want to be pounding lowers with nearly every shot when you're the flex. Since flex and main cannon will be the two people shooting cannons most often, you can't have both of you shooting top decks or both of you shooting lowers. One needs to be doing tops, and one needs to be hitting lowers. Your job as flex is to hit lower decks. Now there's more to it than just hitting lowers. I did some testing, and I'll explain my math once I make the bilge video, as it'll be more relevant then. But for now, all you need to know is that when you're pumping them full of holes, don't shoot two holes to make a tier 3 hole. Instead, shoot two cannonballs at different spots and make two tier 2 holes. Like I said, I'll explain the math when I make the bilge video, but all you need to know for now is to prioritize getting each hole open first, then focus on making them all tier 3s. This will cause their boat to be under an insane amount of pressure very quickly, compared to you just shooting the same spot over and over again. And when you're hitting lower decks, you want to find the bilge and prevent him from being able to repair the holes. In order to find the bilge, you want to keep hitting lower decks, and when you get a hit marker, or an X as I like to call them, you need to call out where the bilge is. So if you shoot the front of their boat and you get an X, then make the call out, bilge is front. The reason you're doing this is because when you get an X, you're hitting the bilge off his repair. And when you hit him off the hole, it makes his life so much more difficult because the water is coming in at the same speed since he's not able to repair anything. Find the bilge and make sure he can never repair so that he's forced to call his flex down to help him. Here's an example of what I mean. This was a fight we had against Indy, the guy in the video. You can see how many holes he has on his ship, and when he goes down to repair, he gets knocked off the repair twice. So even though he has flex down below bucketing for him, since he's not able to repair anything, the water rushes in too fast and they sink. Your overall goal as flex when you're fighting galleon versus galleon is to hit enough lowers or to hit the bilge off his repairs enough times that the opposing team's flex has to go down to bail. Once this happens, they now have one less person shooting cannons, catching masts, watching borders, going for boards, resing teammates, etc. If you can get their flex to go down before you have to go down, then you're one step closer to winning the broad, because now you have your helm, main cannon, and you all shooting, whereas they only have helm and MC, a 3v2, easily winnable. You also need to make sure that you stagger your reballs with main cannon. I talked about it a little bit in my main cannon video, and how imperative it is to make sure that you always have at least one person top deck shooting cannons. I'll quickly play an excerpt from that video. 
For most of the time spent in abroad, you're only going to have two people shooting cannons at a time. MC and Flex will be the two main cannoneers, and it is critical that you don't both reball at the same time. Because while 7 seconds may not seem like a long time, it can give the other crew just enough leeway to take back the broad since they aren't being pressured. Now usually it's Flex's job to reball early, so if you both have 10 cannonballs, the Flex will reball when they have between 3 and 5 cannonballs left in their pockets. This means that when the Flex has refilled back to 10 cannonballs and is back on top deck, the MC has run out of cannonballs and needs to go downstairs to reball. This will create a system that allows for at least one person to be on cannons providing pressure at all times. So as I've said, it's Flex's job to reball early and make sure the stagger is working. Communicate to your main cannon and ask him how many cannonballs he has left. And when you reball and you're up top with 10 cannonballs, tell your main cannon that it's safe to reball. You are in charge of making sure the stagger is done every single time and that you never have a situation where no one's shooting. It's easy to forget. And especially in Hourglass PvP where you'll usually have all your cannonballs top deck, it won't matter too much. But when you fight really good crews, giving the courtesy bucket to your bilge when you reball is the difference between winning and losing. So make sure you stagger your reballs and reball down below deck. And you as slugs are also in charge of resurrecting your teammates. Whenever a Hal, main cannon, or bilge dies, you need to be the one resurrecting them. Now obviously if you need to stay down below and hold with bilge, then that's a different story. But in most situations where it's just a simple cannon line death, you as flex are supposed to revive your teammates. There may be situations where it's preferable for Helm the res as opposed to you, but Helm is the one who makes those calls. In any case, if someone dies, you need to be the one to res them, unless told otherwise by Helm. Now you're not going to win every broadside. There will be times where you as Flex will need to go down and help your bilge bucket because there's just too much water coming in for him to hold solo. Your job is to help him for as long as absolutely necessary. Remember what I said, when Flex is down below, your team is trying to win a 2v3, so you need to get back up top as quickly as possible. The first thing you want to do is be able to Great Bucket. Now I'm sure you probably know what Great Bucketing is. It's where, rather than going all the way up top deck to bail out the water, you simply throw it through the grate and save yourself 5 seconds per bucket. However, you might not know how to Great Bucket most effectively. There are two ways of Great Bucketing. Most new players start out by throwing from the side of the map table. It's much easier to do and might be necessary in specific situations, but is much slower compared to the second way. Now what you want to do is bucket from the middle, saving you that run time to the side of map table and allowing you to bucket as quickly as possible. Now some people already do bucket from middle, and that's great, but some of these people start backsplashing and accidentally throwing water back into the boat rather than out. They'll usually blame the wind by saying, we're going too fast, I can't bucket. However, in 99% of situations, you should not backsplash simply because your boat is moving too quickly. You just don't know how to great bucket. But don't worry, I'll show you how. Liger made a pretty good video on the different roles of a ship, and I'd recommend you check those out too. I'll put links in the description. However, in his videos, he said that you should bucket like this. You also have to widen the angle, so instead of standing in the middle of the table, you want to stand on the far right corner. Doing so will allow you to throw the water through the grate without the risk of backsplashing, even when your boat is zooming. And while this certainly works, I personally bucket this other way, where you throw the bucket as far into the corner as possible. It doesn't matter which method you use, as long as you're not backsplashing, you can do whatever you want. But you have to be able to bucket in the most effective way possible, because the more effective you are at bucketing, the more holes in water you can handle. Anyways, back to the task at hand. If you have a good bilge, then he's only going to call you down when it's an absolute necessity. So if a bilge calls you down and says he needs buckets, this is a drop the baby and go down moment. You should be down below within half a second of him making the call if you're on the cannons. And you should always be taking a scoop at stairs. If the water level is really high, you can actually take a bucket at stairs even though you can't physically see the water yet. Again, I'll let Liger explain. As soon as the water hits the second to last step, you can get a bucket from anywhere on the second deck. This is really nice as you don't have to run all the way to the back stairs. As soon as you go down the first set of stairs, you can get a bucket. And this is a really good tip to know if you're not the bilge because in case the bilge can't keep the water level low, you can run down and help. The reason you do this is because like I said, 
if you have a good bilge, he is only going to call you down when it's critical, and taking a scoop at stairs will allow you to take two buckets back to back and save your ship from sinking. It takes you such a little amount of time to take a bucket from stairs, but will absolutely save your ship from sinking when you're in dire situations. And if you do take a bucket and hear the splash noise that comes with scooping up water, you should throw that first bucket through the side of the grate, then go down below, take a second bucket, and continue bucketing like you normally do through the middle. Now once you're actually down here bucketing with bilge, you should always look for an opportunity to repair some of the holes close by. Take an example where you just have one hole. You could bucket this hole all day if you'd like, but if you want to be up top faster, then you should repair that hole as quickly as possible. Same thing applies here. As long as you have enough time to go without buckets while you repair the hole, then you should always repair it. This way, water will come in much slower, allowing you to have an easier time holding and means you get to go up top much quicker. It's usually the bilge's job to tell you when you can go up and stop holding. Since the bilge can see how many holes are on the front or the sides of the ship, they're the ones who actually release you from being stuck bucketing. But you can always ask and just say, can I go up? It's up to the bilge to release you though, because a good bilge will only keep you down for as long as absolutely necessary. So stay there until they tell you to go up. Now there might be some stressful situations where you'll need both you and bilge to be bucketing at the same time in order to keep up with the amount of water flooding into the boat. It is critical that when this happens, you and bilge throw from opposite sides of the grate, one he throws left and one he throws right. That way there's no chance of backsplashing. It's also important to remember to not hog the middle of the map table and be as far to the side as possible to avoid an accidental backsplash. And when you're in these situations where both you and the bilge are bucketing, once the water goes down to a holdable level, then bilge is the one who will go down and make a couple repairs. But you need to make sure that you keep bucketing at all times until bilge tells you to go up. Another thing to remember as flex is that it's up to you and Helm to be catching and repairing the masts. Normally Helm makes the calls and tells you if you should be catching a mast or not. So listen for that call to repair, catch, raise, or lower a sail, as that's your job. Since we're on the topic of sails, another one of your responsibilities as flex is to help raise and drop a sail. Now some crews will have it where front mast is main cannon's job. If it needs to be caught or lowered, then that's MC's job, and you as flex would be in charge of midmast. But other crews have different ideas on what works for them. When I helm for my crew, I'll almost always drop midsail myself and keep flex on the cannons. And if Helm calls you for a double raise on one of the sails, you as Flex want to be going to the opposite side of the broad in order to raise that sail. That way you don't accidentally have two people running to the same spot and getting stuck on each other trying to raise a sail. Another thing you need to do as Flex is to help the Helm repair his wheel when it breaks. If Helm's wheel breaks and he needs someone to help him repair it, that's your job to do so. And if Helm gets knocked off the ship, you as Flex are now the temporary Helm until he mermaids back. So make sure you're listening for when wheel breaks so you can help him repair it when he calls for it. So now that I've talked about the main things you're supposed to be doing when you're actually on the ship, let me tell you some things you should be doing when you're off the ship, also known as going for boards. When Helm calls for someone to go for a board, Flex is main boarder and main cannon is secondary. When you shoot off to another ship, you can either shoot and try to get a deck land where you land on their ship, or you can shoot in front of their boat and ensure you don't miss. If they're moving, you normally want to shoot slightly in front of their ship, that way you can definitely make it on. But if they're fully demasted and not moving, then you can go for a nice ladder shot or deck land to try and make it on their boat with ease. Now the obvious question, well how do I deck land? That's a skill that just comes with time and practice. It's kind of the same arc as a chain shot, but there's no scientific way to get deck lands like, oh just aim with that cloud right there. Besides just constant practice and knowing how your model flies through the air, it's just up to luck. I'll make a more in-depth tutorial called something like how to board good crews at a later date. But for now, I'll just go over the main objectives. Your first goal is to survive. If they are fully demasted, just jump in the water if you need to. They're not gonna go anywhere. Just sit there and snipe them. Wait for your opportunity. I promise it'll come. Just don't die before it does. And when you actually make it onto their boat, your job, again, is to survive. Anchoring them is secondary. Live first, then anchor them later. Go for the anchor when you have a chance. If you see that they're hurting, you can hear them bucketing through the grate, then stand on the grate. 
stand on the grate and strafe around to force them to backsplash on you and sink their own boat. And be sure to shoot them. Some people will just sit on the grate and look pretty. Make sure you shoot the bilge, because you can shoot through the grate and throw blunderbombs through it. Don't just stand there and look like an idiot. Stand there and shoot them to make their life difficult. You don't actually need to push the bilge and go down below deck to risk your life. Just stay up top and stand on the grate to force them to backsplash on you while continuously shooting them through the grate and making their life hard. Now there's a million other things I could go over, like pixel jumping, funny boarding, playing captain's quarters, what routes you can take, and so much more. But I'll leave that for the boarding video. For now, play your life. Don't risk it and shoot the bilge through the grate. Now just like with all these roll videos I've been doing, I ended by answering questions that y'all submitted to my Discord server pertaining to the flex roll. One question said, how do I flex when my crew doesn't call for help? I mean, not much you can really do. Your bilge needs to be talkative when he's under pressure and call you down when needed. If he doesn't do that, that's not your fault, it's his. Just tell your bilge to be more communicative so that you can save your boat from sinking. And tell your helm to call when he wants you to board. You shouldn't have to ask him in every situation whether you should go for a board or not. He needs to tell you. So if your team isn't communicating, yell at them to start doing so. How do I win the gun duel? I mean, just hit more of your shots. Do some aim trainers so that you never miss. Get your strafe in on point and stop spamming spacebar and hopping like a frog. It makes yourself so easy to hit. As a flex, how do I know whether I should be shooting cannons or repairing the masts? Like I hinted to before, you should be catching masts when Helm tells you to. Or if a mast is fully raised and it takes you less than two seconds to catch it, then you can absolutely catch it without having to wait for Helm to call for it. But if your mast is fully dropped and it'll take you upwards of 10 seconds just to raise it, only do it if Helm tells you to. But usually, you're better off hitting lowers and applying pressure. Who helps with buckets if Flex is boarding? Main Cannon is in charge of bucketing whenever Flex goes for a board. Now a good Helm will usually not send Flex to board if you're hurting bad enough downstairs that you need two players to hold, but sometimes it does happen, and when it does, that's Main Cannon's job. If I don't have a competent Helm, when should I go for boards? Well like I've said, hopefully your Helm will tell you when to go. But if he refuses to for whatever reason, you should almost always go for a board when the opposing crew is peeling off of a broad because if you don't board, they'll definitely get away. But if you can make it on, you might be able to anchor them. How should I change my play style if I have one, two, or three people going for boards? If you only have yourself solo boarding, then you need to play your life. Your goal should not be to necessarily kill them, but to just survive. Now, if you have two or three people, then you can just stand on grade or push them down below. And like I said, I'll make a tutorial about boarding eventually, but yeah, if you're solo, Play your life, if you're a duo or a trio, then you can be aggressive and push them. Who's in charge of putting out the fires? If Bilge has one or no lowers, then he can put out the fire. But if you have plenty of holes down below, then you'll want Flex to put out the fire. But normally, if you're all taking courtesy buckets when you're reballing, then you can just use that water to put out the fire. How do I progress through the fight as a Flex? Your first priority is winning the broad. Hit lower decks and get the other flex down below before you have to go down. As the fight progresses, you'll probably need to hold for the bilge, and at that point, you need to repair and bucket efficiently so you can get up top faster. Keep repeating these two notions until your helm inevitably calls you to go for a board. Go for a board and make sure they sink. When should I stay and hold buckets with my bilge, and when should I just give him a couple and then go up? This is up to your bilge. He can see how many holes he has, so he'll be able to know how many buckets he needs. A good bilge will usually say something like, three more then go up, or give me two. This lets you know how many buckets you should be taking before leaving. When should I go for a board or shoot cannons? Your main priority is to be shooting the cannons. Only go for boards or hold with the bilge when you're told to do so. Your helm will tell you when to go for boards and your bilge will tell you when to bucket. Listen for that call and until then, Focus on shooting lowers. And I know I've kind of drilled into your mind that you need to shoot lower deck holes into a galleon when you're the flex, but it's true. Lowers win games. However, there are certain situations where you want to be shooting top decks. Those situations are usually when the other crew is close enough to you that you can't dodge the cannonball 
because there's just not enough time to react. If you're that close to each other, you want to be spamming top decks and trying to kill them before they kill you. Once you get the bag, then you can go back to shooting lowers. Just make sure you spread them out and don't hit the same hole 50 times in a row. And that was all the questions from my Discord. If you had any more questions you wanted answered, put it in this comment section and I'll gladly give you an explanation. I know this video was relatively short compared to the MC your helm video, and that's partly because I left out all the intricacies and techniques of the boarding aspect. I promise I'll make a boarding tutorial soon, but as for now, remember what I said. Your goal when boarding is to survive. They cannot shoot cannons, go for boards, raise their masts, put out fire, turn on the wheel, resurrect teammates, and a whole list of other things as long as you are on their boat and alive. The moment you die is the moment that they take back the broad since they have the advantage. I'll make the build video and the boarding tutorial in the next coming weeks. Until then, join my Discord, and I have a forum chat called Questions for Kaijoy, where you can ask me questions and I'll give you a detailed response to my thoughts on the question. And I don't normally end my videos like this, but thank y'all for watching. I read every single comment y'all post, and it makes me feel really warm and giddy inside whenever I join a random Discord server or join a random voice channel in the SOD official, and people look at me and go, yo, that's Kaijoy. It's pretty cool being known and having people know me just from my YouTube videos. And I know some people just say this sort of thing, like, oh yeah, I read all the comments, but they don't really mean it. But I do. I genuinely read everything I can find. Even the people who post my content over there on Reddit, I see you too. And I'm starting to build a decent following, so I just want to say to thank you all for watching and spreading my content to other people. But anyways, good luck.